Hi, hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I want to go ahead and update you guys with day two of the Righteous Fire Juggernaut in Soft Core Trade. Uh, now, big disclaimer, I am awful at playing Trade League. I'm never really good at like setting up whoops or buying items. I, I still kind of play Trade Pseudo SSF where most of my gear is essentially self-crafted or identified. And then when I get currency, I kind of just like bulk buy gear because I'm just so bad at trading. All right, with that being said though, let's go ahead and get started. So before I jump into this map, I want to go ahead and tally up some things that I did for you guys because people always ask. So I bought Legacy of Fury for a little over two divines yesterday. Uh, I farmed or oh, found a cold iron point, sold it for 40C. Uh, identified a plus one ami, a plus one chaos, 70 life, and a couple of resists that sold for 40C. Um, I had an old belt that I ended up selling for Immortal Flesh. It was 41 chaos res because it had like a 30 chaos res roll, and then I crafted with Betrayal for. It was like cold and chaos it had like 50 life regen and like i don't know 80 life on a leather belt base so that sold for 30c i pulled a divine out of a ritual all of this together allowed me to get my legacy of fury and then with all the other currency that i farmed just through general means ended up picking up a six link it was i think like 60 chaos and then i self-crafted it now before i go into the six link i just want to explain a few things i know that in my in my content i explain using a pure armor chest but since we're in the early league and you don't have that much currency, it's significantly cheaper and easier to just craft on an armor ES base. So what I did is I quite literally went to peewewiki.net and I searched via body armor. So we are armor ES at the moment. So I just click the armor button and here you can see the highest armor base on an armor ES, which is the St. Halberg as the first one and Saintly Chan Mail as the second one. Uh, and even like the conquest mail is not that bad. It rolls pretty high armor so realistically like even elegant ring mail like they're not that bad right so i just searched through six link and i went and sniped one off and then i quite literally did the method where you throw everything at the wall until something sticks uh since it's early game i didn't really have much currency i scour alec i threw a few chaoses at it um i think i maybe harvest pressed a few buttons ended up getting something pretty decent it's not amazing but it's pretty decent um, it's got a good life roll. It's got 1k armor, which is enough for the content we're running. It's got a pretty sick regen roll, and it's got enough uh, suffix open for me to craft the chaos. So I'm actually sitting at 69 chaos res. Eldritch currency can finally be used. It was bugged the all of the entirety of yesterday, so now I'm going to be farming my Eldritch implicits. Um, I also picked up a Saffle's frame. I decided to skip the Dawnbreaker progression because I have a Legacy of Fury, and because Saffle's frame gives so much Ellie res which really helps offset the Immortal Flesh. And if you play like me and you're trying to get near Chaos Cap all the time, the Saffle's Frame is just so valuable in that sense. With that being said, let's jump right into a layer tier 13. Before I start this map, remember, I'm still on a four link. So I've got like, uh, I've got Combustion, Fire Trap is 20. I have a plus one, uh, I have a plus one weapon. Uh, I have literally just a four link the gems aren't even 20 i just flip them so my single target at the moment is horrible um we need to work on single target so that's basically going to be elder helm slash 21 gems uh, i think are today now the reason why i decided to rush legacy of fury is number one my main focus is always mapping it's something that i've always really really enjoy doing mapping is very very enjoyable for me personally so while we're, while we're doing this, let's go ahead and take some time to talk about the Lee mechanic. So unfortunately, as you know, a lot of people would have predicted, uh, Righteous Fire, at least in the content I'm on right now, doesn't really feel amazing for the Lee mechanic. I will say it's not hard for me to get to floor three. Uh, the problem though is because I'm running red tier maps and I'm on a four link, um, my single target suffers, right? If, if I was more adequately geared for this content, then it would not be as bad. But the problem at the moment, and I'm not saying they need to change anything, I'm just letting you know my thoughts, is that you literally cannot die in that league mechanic. So because you can't die, there's quite literally almost no reason to build super tanky like you normally would for mapping or even some bosses. Um, so for players who want to excel more in that league mechanic, what I would personally recommend you do is kind of <clears throat> ditch the idea of using an, uh, a defensive shield just go with a straight offensive spirit shield you can get like a plus one fire with like 90 percent fire damage i don't know the best way to craft it but i'm just giving you examples uh you don't have to go with a tanky body armor you could go with a plus one max curse body armor and then you're already dual cursing 
you know, don't use the uh, Frost Blink setup that I'm currently using. Instead, just manually cast your curses. It's not really going to be that big of a deal. Um, you could consider going with like a Staff variant, although I don't have an exact uh, POB to help you with that right away. Um, but yeah, things like that. You can still absolutely play Righteous Fire in the League Mechanic, and it will be all right. It's just the, the template that I like to build on is extremely tanky in a mapping environment. And that, it just unfortunately does not really excel at all in the current League Mechanic. But, that being said, the League Mechanic has actually been one of the most fun experiences I've played. It's the first League Mechanic that just doesn't feel ridiculously broken in terms of like how strong the monsters are or how imbalanced things are. It's just simply like, right now, if you are squishy and do a lot of single target, you are being rewarded for the League Mechanic. And that's that's really one of the... That and the fact that the coins don't auto pick up is probably the only thing that I don't really like. And that's not that big. And we haven't even had any content patches yet, so pretty nice. Anyway, overall, still pretty happy with the League. Um, really happy that the Jug is smooth sailing. I think I only have one death, and it was like... I was running a minus ma minus nine max map, and I frost blinked into the boss, and it was possessed, and it was the lightning whipper, and there, it was double boss, and they were both possessed, and they both hit me at the same time, and I died, and that's entirely my fault. Uh, so yeah, let me just go ahead and do a quick betrayal, because I know people always ask about betrayal, so let's see what we got here. Uh, immune to cold, seems good. Uh, max life plus max life, all right. Let's scoop up all of this, always freeze extra max life okay this one we don't run that is death right there uh okay let's take this and then the last one i guess would be like all this so what i like to do for betrayal is uh now i check okay good luck yep yep i uh take a portal here why i don't really know it's just kind of something i'm used to clean out my inventory good 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 and now that whole betrayal should be like set up and i'm basically gonna just like frost blink and infernal cry and blow up like half of it Okay, I don't hurt these guys, though. This is kind of weird. To be fair, I did give them literally 10 max res with fire res, so... Yep, that's my fault. Scrap metal! Betrayal is super, super, super satisfying. And just to give you guys a rundown of my current atlas, because I know this is always a very common thing, I will let you know what I am currently doing in just a minute, and then we're probably done. Okay, so at the moment, I immediately rushed my focused investigation. Uh, I went up, I grabbed my covert stakeouts. Uh, I came up, I'm probably going to drop all this now, but I came through for Kirak. Kirak helps me with map completion. Maps help with map sustain. Uh, came across map sustain. Blocked the league mechanics I don't like. Came across, grabbed all of this for early game gearing. Uh, came up, grabbed my stream of consciousness. Came across... Went into Trial of Glory so I could make some extra money in maps. Uh, basically, at the moment, offerings are like 5c each, so whenever I proc a trial, it's 5c. And then when Trial of Glory rolls, well, hasn't rolled yet. Uh, coming up here, I grab my Shrine Nodes because I'm addicted to Shrines. Grab my Shrines again, and then I went into Expedition and Expedition, and now I'm going over here into Huyen for Expedition as well. Uh, and then we'll see kind of where we're going from there. I still got to do some bossing. I'm just kind of lazy right now, but uh, I could absolutely smash Exarch and Eater. Uh, like I said, I'm just on a four link, so I don't really feel like it. But I could absolutely, no problem, smash them. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Real quack, uh, quack, <laughs> real quick before I go... Because uh, people are going to ask, so with no unyielding on right now, my tooltip for RF is 284, and my fire trap is currently 170. God, that is so low. <laughs> no wonder. My goodness. All right, anyway, see you guys all later.